But there's my picker truck. Should just call it good. Put the seat back in. We'll go start hauling some stuff. Looks like a hauler now. Look at that thing. <laughs> I like it. I'm happy to see this primary, or whatever you want to call this, uh, mainframe where the seatbelts attach into is all in good condition. Um, and still very much intact and straight. Make things easy to build off of that. A few more chunks, I want to get rid of all of this. Put in some square tube, just like it is here. Put it down. And yeah, this stuff's so rusted. I'm gonna just try and take it all off. Look at you patches here. Pickup truck. Not quite. I gotta finish you. That is a. It's a big old flatbed. That's for sure. You know, I thought it would be pretty depressing at this point with patches all torn apart, not looking like she used to, but this, put, this puts a big old smile on my face because it's all going so smoothly and according to plan. And it still feels like patches, even without our Winnebago parts or Winnebago colors, stripes. Still think it would be cool to reuse that front cap though. But, we'll see. If I run out of steel, we'll definitely reuse that. But I would like to do it all custom. Although, a cap would be kind of cool, because then you can take it on and off, work on things in here. This is actually pretty nice, just having the whole thing come off. My idea would be to build it in part way, and then build some grills. That can be removed. And you'd have to just kind of reach in and work like before. Though, uh, yeah, I think we could do that better. If we reuse the cap, I'll be using bolts, make it easy to take on and off. Um, okay, what next? There's my walls. Now let's just uh, chop them down so I can store them easy. I'll set aside the bad parts. Keep the good stuff. up and put into a pile uh, most of the stuff is pretty good there's some somewhat rusty stuff that I'd keep for scrap just in case I want to do something that doesn't need uh, such a nice piece of steel but uh, like 90% of that's pretty decent and that's the pile I'm not keeping just extremely rusted I have a few more pieces once we cut these off figure out 
Okay, I think the next thing I want to tackle is this side rail. Looks like it's held on by screws, but those are so rusted, I'm just gonna grind the heads off. And uh, looks like there's another piece of steel under there, maybe? Or is that just part of the floor? So, yeah, we'll grind off screw heads. Um, then we'll take out the stairwell here. I think it's just uh, screws up top. That might come out. Steel two by fours. That's a big ol' two by four and then a two by two. Or a one and a half by one and a half square. Easier if I put a heat gun on this stuff, it got really hot. off floor feeling like it's ready to come it is uh 
Yeah, I think we're about ready to take that off. And we'll see. I could probably come out next. Looks like it's about ready to go. cord holder. Oh yeah, I forgot I screwed that thing to the bottom of it. It's a junction box for connection to the back generator. Yeah. All right, got the generator cord off. Now I have to go get me a nice, big, fat, shiny chrome tip. Next. Maybe go for this these copper tubes. Check. Yeah, we got pretty much all of the wall paneling, thin sheets. Gonna have to try and figure out how to take this stuff off. Right, just get it really hot and get it. Try and scrape it. We'll do that last. I also gotta get this nasty tape stuff off. It's like '80s Eternal Bond. It's kind of falling apart. I'm thinking the flooring should come next. Yeah, it's still a little cleanup, no hop on the flooring here. Plywood is glued to this rigid insulation panel panels. 
so let's make things a little difficult. However, if I cut this bolt, cut the last couple bolts, I think I might be able to lift the whole thing off. Maybe cut it into sections. Uh, well, let's see what I come up with here. But this is going to take forever if I do it like this. All right, I unscrewed a few things from the bottom here. The mount face tubes. Had some cable clamps on this pipe. Uh, I tried getting the, this thing out, but that's kind of in a tight spot. I might have to grab a hand, screwdriver. Got this one off. Uh, not too much to this floor. It's just one big old giant solid panel framed out in one and a half square tube. I had maybe if I had two people I could flip this all up in one piece. But uh, I think something easier would be just to chop it into sections. Let me cut it right there at that frame. Cut it in half or maybe cut it into thirds. You know, pull up some more of the wood so I could see if there's anything running down the middle. Okay, we do have some beams running down the center, which is actually pretty cool. It's a lot more of this uh, 1.5 inch I can reuse and save some money. More of this stuff. So, I'll cut these best I can with the wire at the wheel. Trim them out with the, or finish, finish them out with the sawzall. And then we'll try and lift this back piece off. Okay, that was easier than expected. Ugh, I don't know how I'm gonna get this steel out though. It would be nice to have some extra. But, uh, yeah. Oh well. There it is! First chunk of floor gown. Dropped a freaking handle on the water tank and scratched it, but thank God it's just a scratch. I thought I poked a hole in it. It's like no, but we're good. Just a little baby scratch. Oh, look at these crazy tanks! All like made to fit together. So yeah, black tank, gray tank. Those will be easy to get out now. Okay, I wonder if we can lift this section. Feels like it's ready to come. Let's get this piece out of here.
open it. This is a strange view. Look at this freaking RV. Okay. Floor's out. Now I can start figuring out how I'm going to do the tanks, holding tanks, freshwater tank, battery storage, um, probably still about going to be in about the same location. Uh, it'd actually be nice to center it. It'd be nice to have a floor panel that pulls up and have batteries underneath of it. Um, let's need to reroute wiring. Probably get some conduit for that. And pull out all this flimsy glued on sheets of metal. And just let bugs and everything else in. Probably rebuild all this. This is uh, not really in a shape I need anymore. I need no more steps. Some uh, more wiring to take out, of course. House battery stuff. We're just gonna put this all. I'm gonna pull it out and set it aside for right now. Much old carpet. It's not moldy. Okay, keep this set aside for. Padding or insulating. Handy. That's handy though to have all these pieces like this. I use, can use this for something else. taped on. Bring it all down to the frame. Looks like this is, these are the pieces that attach to the frame, so that's our main support we're building off of. Generator cabinets. Oh boy, lots more to do. Pull that wiring out. I'll get this, get all the carpet off and this thin, this ridiculous stuff. Interesting, I wonder why they put that bevel there. To tell you what the front is. For splashing. Help with splashing. Yes, I want to install these back in the floor, but I want to have access panels so I can get down and in. Which I'm not quite sure how I will do. I'll probably just have to have steel floor with access panels and then throw throw down some uh Throw rugs over top of it. Alright, alright. Just gonna. This is fun, you guys. I like this. Uh, 
Let's see, generator connections, take this refueling stuff out. If I'm gonna have a truck bed, I'd probably, probably just put the generator on the back and chain it up back there. Be a lot easier to start, stop, and uh, do uh, maintenance on, oil changes, things like that. Uh, I do love the refueling thing though, that makes things super easy. I'd love it if that thing could just run non stop off the main tank, but uh, don't really have a system for that. I don't really want to set up an automatic filling. That makes me nervous. Like, it'd be easy to do and easy to make sure it's safe. If you do a return line out of the cap, if it, if it gets stuck on, um, it'll just recycle back into the tank. So, yeah, I might do that later. But for right now, we're keeping everything simple. No special cabinets. No, uh, no big old main propane tank. I'll just use little five gallon tanks. A little easier to, to transport and if I need to get a ride to fill them up, I can. This thing is, uh, about the size of three of those, so. Uh, I don't know, it's nice to have, but it's old. It needs to be painted at least. And, uh, just doesn't seem necessary. I'll just get some of the smaller tanks. I need to figure out how to get the propane out of there, though. Used a little bit out of it. That's still uh, propane that the uh, Keith Williams helped out with. Thank you again, Keith, for the propane. I got to cook some burgers, and then uh, I think I got heat for one night, and then the furnace went out. But, uh, yeah, we got that thing's almost completely full. Maybe I'll take it down, put some legs on it, so I can just have a big propane tank to haul around. Found me a radio. anyway screws out of these.
All right, get all this outdoor carpet removed. Pretty easy. Got to get some screws up here as well. A lot of this is glued down, but I do believe those screws had to come out. Take the flooring panels up. Still got a uh, piece under the tank here. Oh, a couple pieces of that. Tanks will be next. Got the compressor disconnected from the power. Yes, yes, I think tanks will be next. Got this stuff. This whole area is rotted, so I'm probably just gonna rip that out. Yeah, I'll do some. I'm gonna pick up some screws, grab up this carpet, these. Corner pieces. Oh yeah, here's that burn spot from the parking brake. Looks like that got really hot.